Welcome to Reagan and Friends, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each month, we will share some behind-the-scenes moments and stories of President Reagan with some of his more famous friends. This commentary will be a few minutes of remembering a friend. You probably think of him as a friend, too. It's still difficult for me to realize that John Wayne is no longer here. If you don't mind, I'd like to share some memories with you. Many people in these last few weeks have asked, what was he really like? Well, he was just about what you saw on the screen. He stood up for what he believed was right, he placed a high premium on honor, and he had a rare sensitivity. Nancy and I can bear witness to that. Marion Morrison was born in Iowa in 1907, came west with his family in 1914, and pretty soon was being called Duke by everyone who knew him, after some local firefighters in Glendale, California thought it would be fun to give the boy the same nickname as his constant companion, a proud dog named Duke. It's everything a Missouri park could crave. There's two snow-capped mountain ranges with peaks lost in the sky. Marion Morrison got his first starring role as the cowboy Breck Coleman in the 1930 film The Big Trail. During this production, studio executives gave Morrison a new name in the hopes of making him an easier sell to film audiences, and he readily accepted the moniker John Wayne, saying it was okay with him if the people paying a salary wanted to spruce up his name. Throughout the 1930s, John Wayne diligently and strategically honed his craft while starring in a series of less well-known Western features and serials, preferring to spend most of his time with stuntmen and real-life cowboys so they could teach him the skills necessary to play a realistic cowboy on screen. He developed over this period a signature walk, a fist-fighting style, wardrobe preferences, and performed many of his own stunts. Then, in 1939, director John Ford gave him his big break as Ringo Kidd in the classic film Stagecoach. John Wayne's performance made him a star for good. Over the years, he made many friends in Hollywood, including Ronald Reagan. Talking about his friendship with John Wayne in a 1979 Reader's Digest article, Ronald Reagan said, We called him Duke, and he was every bit the giant off-screen as he was on. Everything about him, his stature, his style, his convictions, conveyed enduring strength. Yet there was more. To my wife Nancy, Duke Wayne was the most gentle, tender person I ever knew. Duke Wayne was very often at political gatherings and so forth, and uh, most supportive of, of me, and I was very grateful to him for it. You could count on him. Ronald Reagan once shared a story about the character of John Wayne. When Ronald Reagan was president of the Screen Actors Guild, there was a contentious strike. Every morning, Ronald Reagan would wake up to another article raking his name through the mud in the newspaper. And I came home one day, and Nancy told me that she'd had a phone call that morning after I left, and it was John Wayne. And John also was reading the papers, and John, she'd never met him. And John said, I just thought you might want to hear a friendly voice uh, about this time and then told her how supportive he was and so forth of what I was doing. And he did that every morning when the press was hostile. She could count on a call from John Wayne just to, to cheer her up. The 1940s and 50s saw John Wayne develop into an important figure on the American landscape with a series of starring roles in major westerns and war pictures. At the 101st Airborne Brigade Forward Base Camp in Vietnam, a guest from the entertainment world brings a touch of home to U.S. soldiers. He also toured the world and entertained troops tirelessly for the USO, all while raising a growing family. In the 1979 Reader's Digest, Ronald Reagan recalled, When the war broke out, John Wayne tried to enlist but was rejected because of an old football injury to his shoulder, his age of 34, and his status as a married father of four. He flew to Washington to plead that he be allowed to join the Navy but was turned down, so he poured himself into the war effort by making inspirational war films, among them The Fighting Seabees, Back to Bataan, and They Were Expendable. To those back home and others around the world, he became a symbol of the determined American fighting man. In the 1960s, John Wayne got involved with politics, even helping Ronald Reagan run for governor. He attended a 1966 fundraising dinner to support Ronald Reagan and launched a Get Out the Vote television campaign to help him as well. Hello. I'm real glad to be able to talk to you folks today about coming election. I'm sure we all agree. On our candidate, uh, two years ago, we made a successful film explaining our time-proven method for getting out the vote. And the man who was one of our hardest precinct workers will show you how the Republican Victory Squad, as we call it, works. He graduated from precinct work 
He is now our candidate for governor, my good friend, Ronald Reagan. In the 1960s, John Wayne earned three Academy Award nominations, finally winning an Oscar for his 1969 performance as Rooster Cogburn in True Grit. His final on-screen performance as a gunman struck with cancer in 1976 as The Shootist is considered among his greatest performances. Following his death, John Wayne was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. But perhaps John Wayne's greatest legacy was his dying wish, which was that his family and supporters use his name and likeness to help the doctors fight cancer, a wish that led to the creation of the John Wayne Cancer Foundation in 1985. Over the years, his foundation has supported research by funding the creation of the Cancer Institute that bears his name, education programs, awareness programs, and support groups. Concluding his article in Reader's Digest about his friend, Ronald Reagan wrote, Earlier this year, when doctors told Duke there was no hope, he urged them to use his body for experimental medical research to further the search for a cure. He refused painkillers so he could be alert, and he spent his last days with his children. When John Wayne died on June 11th, a Tokyo newspaper ran the headline, Mr. America Passes On. There's right and there's wrong, Duke said in the Alamo. You gotta do one or the other. You do the one and you're living, you do the other and you may be walking around, but in reality, you're dead. Duke Wayne symbolized just this, the force of the American will to do what is right in the world. He could have left no greater legacy. After becoming president of the United States, Ronald Reagan still often remembered his friend. In 1981, Ronald Reagan was gifted this John Wayne Winchester commemorative rifle, serial number one, which includes an ornate engraving around the gun with names of John Wayne's movies. And during an all-star tribute in 1985, President Reagan joked, You know, when I first started in my present job, I'd sometimes put together in my mind my own dream cabinet. You know, John Wayne as Secretary of State, Clint Eastwood at Defense, Jack Benny as Secretary of Treasury, Groucho Marx at Education. But even presidents can't have everything, except tonight, tonight all of you here, well, you've really made my day. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified every time new videos and podcasts are added to our site, including our Reagan and Friends, Words to Live By, and Reagan Forum podcasts. And don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook and Twitter, as well as at Reagan Foundation on Instagram and YouTube.